Welcome out to our weekly mastermind call. All right, so this call um, is an attempt to answer the question that constantly comes before us, and that is, how do I find and commit builders in doTERRA? And I think we've probably talked about this particular subject 1,000 times uh, on in these calls, but, but the reason I, I wanted to bring it up today is because I just got done mentoring someone, and, and, <laughs> and uh, what I've learned, I mean, look, the key to this entire thing, like if you want to hit blue diamond, if you want to hit presidential or, or diamond or whatever it is, whatever rank you're trying to reach, the key is being able to find and commit leaders and develop them and uh, and so forth and um and so we 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 have all kinds of of uh of things that we do to try to train people on how you commit somebody but i'd like to ask the mastermind and i'm going to open this up to um uh, let's say i don't know silver's above how do you commit someone what are the what are the key ingredients right so what is what did you do um, to commit someone? And I want to talk. Well, I, I, let me just start start there. And there's a direction I want to take the call in, but I'm anxious to see where the mastermind goes with this. So you can hit star five star to, to to raise your hand. But what is the key? How do you find? I'm not even going to go there. How do you commit a builder? How do you commit someone? to follow you in this process of, of building a doTERRA team. How do you do it? Star five star raises your hand. We know how to find them, frankly. You teach classes, you invite people, you make an angel list and all that. All right. Okay. I think I just unmuted Alonto Mangandog's line. All right, Alonto, how do you commit a builder? Well, uh, there's the hard way and the easy way, and I tend to go towards the easy way, and the <laughs> thing that's been most effective is leveraging your upline. So we were, we were talking about on the, the Go Press call yesterday on how do you commit influencers, right? Like how do you get to that point where – now you're attracting those people that are going to build big time. And uh, they were talking about the, your story. So it was Kelly King Anderson, uh, Rod, and they brought you over to Natalie Goddard. And that idea of leveraging people that already have that success to do the committing for you. Yes, Absolutely. Okay, thank you for bringing this up because I just – okay, so I, I, I don't know if she's going to be on the call uh, today but if she, it, or if she'll listen to it. But So I want to be sensitive to this. But here's uh, – so this, I just did a call, and we went through the numbers with her, and I said, okay, how many people have you taught a class to? And she had taught around 50 people. And I said, okay, how many of those have enrolled? She got out her binder that had every single – the paperwork of everyone that she's enrolled, 25 people have enrolled. And, and I said, okay, and of those people that have enrolled, how many of those had a membership overview? 24. So almost every single person had a member overview. How many people had a business overview? 10. Decent number. It could be better, but a decent number there. But she could not commit any of those 10. They They were – some of them kind of committed. Some of them were willing to teach classes. Some of them did a little bit here and there, but nobody really committed to her in a, to, to do this. And, and then I said, and then I asked her this question. I said, how many of those people have you introduced to your upline diamonds? And the answer was zero. And, and you're right, Alonto. The, one of the keys to committing builders is to is to engage your upline to help you commit people. 
And, um, I mean, yesterday, for example, I went to lunch with a, with a potential builder, and I brought – and Rod was with me. So I had Rod and me to try to help uh, commit a new leader. And, and, it, and it's like, could I do it myself? Yes, I could do it myself. But it's what, what Alonzo is teaching us is the power of, of engaging your upline to help, to help in that process. Thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that, Alonzo? Um, so that, that aspect of, like, when I, when I pointed out, like, the, the easy way or the hard way, that is what we experience. And, like, at the very beginning, like, we tried to do, like, what your builder just did. Like, we tried to, like, do, like, the steps when it comes to edge system, like, did the classes, shared the samples, did all that stuff. But when we were talking, like, the business side, it wasn't believable because we weren't living it. And it was tough. It was hard. And literally, it was, like, a few-minute conversation with, like, Rod that, like, got them to, to that point of, okay, I I can do this. Right. Exactly right. Um, okay. And, and you know, and this is the weird thing, is that, is that people actually feel like, like there's this weird thing where they say, yes, but I don't want to bug my upline. There's, there's that thing. But then there's also the, but I want to do it myself. I want to know that I can do this myself. And um, Ra, uh, Rich Wayland did a training uh, which is actually on the Daily Edge Facebook group, if anybody want to watch, wants to watch this. And he, the, the training was choosing to go diamond. And one of the, um, one of the actual, uh, um, one of the, one of the, the, the keys that he stated as being part of choosing diamond was choosing to get help. And a, a understanding that you actually need help to do this, and and uh, it's kind of I, I just thought that was a fantastic point that you brought up in that training. So if anybody wants to watch that, go back and watch that. It's on the daily uh, the Daily Edge Facebook group. All right. So for those of you who are joining the call, this call is how do you commit builders? Uh, what's what is the key to doing that? How do you commit someone to to build this business? And Alonco just shared with us in using your upline engaging your upline, leveraging them to help you commit someone to build. What are some other aspects of committing uh, people to build the business? Star five, star to raise your hand. While I'm waiting for hands to go up on this, I actually want to stay on what Alonto taught before I move on a little bit more. Um, so, Rod, you there? I am. <clears throat> Okay, so you just you just did a uh, trip out to Wisconsin to help support your team. I think to Newton Christie out there, and probably the Hessens. Mm-hmm. But uh, when when you were out there in in Wisconsin, how much like at this phase when you go out there, are they like are they like scheduling time for you to meet with and commit leaders? Is that is that the primary focus of your time when you go on these trips? And if so, how would you, or if, if not, or whatever it is, but how would you um, coach us all to take advantage of and engage your uplines in helping uh, commit builders? Yeah, I think, uh, it, well, one, you are correct. Uh, on this trip, uh, we, did do, uh, we did do one uh, basic class in each area. Uh, so I, I spent a week with uh, the Hessens and, and the following week with uh, with. Uh, the fighters, and uh, uh, and in both areas we did at least one uh, basic class, and the reason why is because there was a bunch of people that wanted to uh, wanted to see how I do the basic class, and so so we did that. Uh, the second uh, the second area of focus that we had is in both areas we did kind of a quasi opportunity type of uh, meeting where. Um, where, or at least in the Fikers area, we did a, a wide OTERA, kind of an introduction to the business and uh, uh, and the company meeting, and then uh, we did boot camps 
which are trainings for all builders in both areas. And then, uh, and then in between, uh, we scheduled a lot of one-on-one -on -one, um, mentoring time with either uh, new potential builders, people that have just committed to build, and also uh, leaders uh, and people that are building. And all for the same purpose, though, uh, and that was to uh, to deepen commitment and instill belief, and uh, and and help help people realize uh, their their capability to be able to do it. Okay, okay. So um, this is important. So as we travel around to different areas, and we're supporting our team in those areas, I noticed that you did you kind of had um, certain levels of different activities that you were doing kind of fit into, into different categories. So you were, you mm -hmm. taught classes in the area because people wanted to see how you just did the basic class. Right. You were teaching boot camps to committed build people that were already committed to make sure they knew how to, the basics and the, and how to build their business. And then the rest of the time, it sounded like you were committing people. You were either committing new people or, helping people who were already semi-committed to commit further. Right, right. And and in addition to that, uh, in both areas, we did have a special leadership evening, it, you know, that were, uh, were special events. One area was – well, actually, in both areas, it was a dinner, an evening dinner, um, and, and a place where people could earn, uh, earn the ability to attend. Uh, so we, so mm -hmm. it was kind of an incentive uh, type, of, type of thing. But those – uh, those meetings were to instill or develop a relationship with uh, with people that are actively building. I think it'd be worthwhile, Rod, to maybe post something on the daily the Daily Edge Facebook group and just kind of like what what would be a cool outline of what a leader should try to accomplish when they go into an area, um, you know, and and uh, you know, and, and just kind of. So that so that people can kind of understand why why you're doing what you're doing when you go to an area. I mean, I just did the same thing out in Minnesota. Um, I went out, taught some classes, so they could see how I taught a class. Um, and but and most of my time was spent uh, trying to help commit or f further commit people who are already committed. But that's I mean that's in a nutshell that's what I was doing. Um, right. It's you know, I think uh, step two. There, the, everyone on the call plays a role in this process. You know, and there's there's basically three roles that are taking place. One one is the visiting leader. Uh, the other one is the leadership that's on the ground that's organizing these things. And uh, the third the third participating group are the rest of the team members members in supporting the events that are being scheduled by the leaders. And so each each one of these is a critical role. So. Uh, and they and, and it all escalates to committing and, and committing leaders in a big way. Uh, it's kind of a team synergy effort. So when you get into the bigger levels and you're a traveling leader like like I am and, and you are uh, and other uh, other leaders are as well, um, then our leaders on the ground are organizing in their local markets so that we can spread our influence uh, in a bigger way. And then but all of it is vain if the participants don't actively promote and participate in the events that are occurring. So everyone on the call plays an important role in the cycle and your, in your role in it may evolve over time. Yeah. So that's a great point, Rob, because I, I mean, <laughs> traveling leaders, I have certainly traveled a long way to other places and had the leader on the ground, not do a very good job of, of organ organizing the events or promoting the events. And then I didn't have the people on the ground that were will, that even participated in the events, and it was just it ended up just being a traveling leader <laughs> with, no, <laughs> with no influence at all. But um, but anyway, okay, cool. Um, hey Seth. All right. So yeah, go ahead, Court. Hey, so I just been thinking about this too, and I think that whether it's committing a builder or you know, um, having someone come to a class or teaching them, whatever it is, I think the way that you extend that invitation is so critical. And I was listening to what Alonto and, you know, you and, and Rod have been talking about, and I can't help but think of, you know, so many times I see people, um, you know, extend that invitation, but it's almost like a second thought, right? So, like, at the end of the membership overview, you know, 
is that an afterthought? No, by the way, are you curious about this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and they just asked maybe that one line, you know, um, rather than really having a deep conversation with someone about what they want in life and helping align doTERRA with what they want. I mean, I feel like that is so important. And I recently just watched Rod's uh, training that he did, um, I think it was two weeks ago in Utah. Um, just on Saturday. How- it was just barely. Okay, yeah, so I recently watched that, and it was one of those things that reminded me. Um, so I had that happen, and then you were out here, and those two experiences reminded me that I'm not spending enough time when I'm inviting someone to do the business with me on what doTERRA is really about, right? It's not just an essential oil company, <laughs> and helping align someone's purpose and things that they want in life with that. And you did a really good job when you were here. And then, you know, I had, I watched that video from Roz and I sent it back to a lot of people. And I'm like, you guys got to watch this because I think it's so important that invitation, how we do it. And that's one of the reasons why Alonso was talking about bringing your upline in, right? Because maybe they're a little bit better at articulating that because they've had more experience in doing that. But that's one of the reasons of why you bring the upline in is, is because of their ability to do that right? So it's, I think so much of it comes in that invitation to someone. Yep. Agreed. And let me, so let's get some other hands raised. So I'm going to, so the, the question to the mastermind is how do you commit builders? And this came as a result, this, this is in my mind because of just some people that I've been mentoring recently. And and it reminded me also of a something that Heidi said the other day. She was – well, actually, I think it was Rich. But he was reminding – at the training on Saturday, he reminded me of this time I called up Heidi, my sister. And she was really my first enrollment. And um, and I was – this is when I was like I, – I decided I wanted to go diamond. And so when I called Heidi, I actually said, I'm like, hey, I'm going diamond. And in order to do that, I need to help four people go silver. I just want to know if you want to be one of those four. And um, and then earlier I was talking to Rod before the call. We were kind of discussing this particular topic. And when I was talking to him, I said, you know, it's kind of like when you started in doTERRA that um, you called your sister-in-law and told them what you were doing. And at that time – you were totally broke. I mean, we had just gone through this this recession. We, our company, the the companies, we were both entrepreneurs. We both owned companies, and we both were part of the founders of the company who decided to go without uh, salaries <laughs> to, to get through this, to get through that particular um, economic downturn, and and so we were both on the tail end of not taking salaries for months, or in my case, a year and a half. I don't know how long. It is. I don't know how long you had been doing that, but like we had both been trying to eke out a survival while we're trying to weather this financial storm, and and here you were broke, you you uh, had one car for your <laughs> for your whole family, and you could afford one gas <laughs> to fill up the gas tank once per week, and and in those conditions you talked to your sister-in-law and you were saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And when she said that she, when she got off the phone, she told her husband, we better do this with Rod because you know he's going to be successful at this. And I was just, and, and, and so my point is, and the same thing with what Heidi experienced when I called her up and I said, hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm looking for four silvers. I'm going to go diamond and I want to know if you want to be one of those four silvers. And she decided that she wanted in. Now, this was a person who was already using essential oils. She already knew what they were. And so my conversation could quickly go to door three because she was there. And my relationship with her, because I was a brother, I could take the conversation there much faster. And so so there it was, and then I was able to commit a builder. And so my, so we were talking about, well, what in the world is the difference? Why were we able to commit a builders even when we were told we hadn't experienced any success in doTERRA yet? We financially weren't in a position that was anything to brag about. If anybody were to look at our, at our, at our what we were per, our personal financial situation at that time, they, that wouldn't have been something that would inspire them to follow you or us. So, how do you commit builders? Where are the intangibles? That's the question, right? And so, we got some great advice that you include your upline and 
and Rod did that, as was just mentioned. I mean, he and Kelly took me over to Natalie Goddard's house to help commit me to it. But what else? What commits builders? How do you commit someone? That's the question. Star hey, five star, raises your hand. Yep, go ahead. Sorry, me again. Hey, I, I just can't help it, like, thinking about this. But, I mean, I still think it goes back to, like, you extended that invitation with such confidence and your posture. I mean, I'm sure that you just, I mean, because you had that same conversation with me. Hey, are you going to do this? You want to be one of my four people, right? But there was such confidence in, in when you were saying that, that it's like I felt it. Like I literally felt it like energy. And I was like, holy crap, he's going to do this, you know? And, and I think that that just again comes back to that invitation. Like when you are clear about where you're going and you send that out there and you let people know where you're going, I think that's so critical when you're inviting them to do the business with you, right? And people, I, I, what I've seen is that people have gotten out of the habit of doing that, right? Because maybe they're not sure where they're going and they're going to just try it for a few months and see if it works. Well, you're going to have a really hard time committing somebody when they can sense that from you. But they will feel it. Just like when you invited me, it was energy. I felt that. And I knew you were going to go somewhere with it. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> that, that's a, that, that you're right. You're dead on. And, and, and this is something we talked so you, about. So you before, can be but... elite. You can be blue diamond. You can be presidential. You can be any level and commit somebody if you are crystal clear on why you're, why you're doing it and where you're going. I mean, you are that passionate and that clear about it. Yep. Okay. You just said two words, confidence, and you said crystal clear. And there was, for a while, if you'll recall, years ago, we started talking about the importance of clarity, certainty, and confidence. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those three C's, are you absolutely clear? Do you have great clarity on where you're going with the business? Are you certain about your steps in that direction? And are you confident that you're going to get there? And if you have certainty, clarity, and confidence, then the invitation comes with a different energy that people feel. It isn't even necessarily the words you're saying. It's the energy with that you're using when you extend the invitation. So if you were to give a business – let's say that you were to do a business overview with someone. And at the end of the business overview, they're, they're looking at all the ranks, Right. And you were to turn to someone and say, I'm going to be diamond, and I'm looking for four people that I can help be silver, and I want to know if you'd be one of those four. And if you do that with certainty, clarity, and confidence, the invitation comes with a totally different level of energy to commit the builder. David Ellis, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I, I agree 100%. I think um – to kind of add to add to the to to that, uh, it it helps to understand how you get there. And I think um, I was reading a book uh, here recently, and it talked about how um, we as human beings, what separates us from everything else on this planet, right? Every other animal, every other creature, what separates us from everything else is our ability to change and alter our thoughts. Every other creature, it's, it's instinct, right? It's, it's, I'm hungry, therefore I'm going to kill that and eat it. Or I'm hungry, I'm going to do it. It's, it's, I'm scared, I'm going to run. It's instinctual, right? We are the only creatures on this planet that have the ability to alter our thoughts. And if you alter your thoughts, if you have the ability, think about it, if you have the ability to alter your thoughts, your thoughts literally create your destiny. Like, if you, you know, and we thought about, it, I mean, that's, that's not new. I mean, that's, that's religious-based. That's, that's in every, it's in every uh, self-help book. It's in every personal development book is that, you, you know, as a man thinketh, yep. right? It, it, you think yep. it before you do it. So whatever it and, is you and want to do. And perception is reality. And it is reality as well. Absolutely. And it, if you think it long enough, it becomes a reality. So if in your thought you're like, I can never do this, or if in your thought, it, it, in your invitation, there's this thought that they're not going to want to do this with me, but, I, but I've been told I need to extend the invitation, that, that you've already created the reality. 
And so what you guys are what you're talking about here, and what Courtney was articulating, with, you know, when Seth called or when Rod talked to Seth, and, and those invitations, there was a certainty because of the, the thought and, and the commitment that had been made. Right? They're they're like, I, this over here that I was doing is gone. I I I, I can't do that. This is what I am doing, and therefore I am going to be successful. But it all stems from the thought. Now, because we're in, you know, we're in a different environment now, right? Economically, things are good. Um, you guys are, are, you know, are, are like a lot of people, things aren't as dire as maybe they were back then. That doesn't change, right? You can use that as an excuse, but that doesn't change the thought pattern. And the thought pattern is always for those people that you want to attract to your business is that I want to improve my life. You never wanted to attract anybody to your business that was just fine, just existing, right? Those aren't the people that are going to make the changes necessary or be committed enough to be successful anyway. So you're looking for people that want more in your life. So when you go to them and you sit down with them and with clarity and confidence and you sit down with them and say, this is where I'm going and you provide a direction, right? You provide, this is what I'm going to do. This is the direction I'm headed, and I'm looking for four silvers. I'm just curious if you want to be one of them because I'm going to do that. Right. And it's the thought that came in your mind that you had that, like I said, separates you from, from the slug or, the, the, or, or the, any other animal out there is that you can change your thought, and therefore you can dictate your destiny. And if we, if we put our focus, bring it back to that simplicity of what am I thinking right now? What am I thinking? Because what I'm thinking is going to be a reality. And if I'm thinking this person doesn't want to work with me, then they don't. Or you're going to project that, and, they, and, and then you're not going to have what it, the energy that it takes to bring them in. And so for people, you know, that are struggling with, well, I don't feel confident. You know, that's great that Seth can go to Courtney because Seth, Seth, right? Or that's great that Courtney can, can, can go to Julianne or, that, or that, that Rod could go to Seth because look at what Rod had done in his life, but I've never done that. And so I think there's a disconnect sometime when we sit there and we say, you've just got to be confident and you've just got to be clear and you've just got to be passionate. Well, that's true, but if you're not there yet, you just have to start with the thought. And the thought is that I can do this and I will do this. And then take the next action. Because the thoughts yeah. that you, like you said in the book, the thoughts create your destiny. And if you can think it long enough and you can hold on to that thought, and that's the problem. That's the next problem is that too often we can't hold a, hold, <laughs> yes, can't hold a thought long oh enough to, to create action from it. So they think, yes, I can do this. I'm excited. And then they walk out the door and they can't hold that thought. So practice right. or they uh, Practice exactly holding right. that or, thought. Or I believe I'm going to be diamond, and I believe it while I'm sitting here on this call, or I believe it while I'm in convention, or I believe it while I'm at the monthly training. But then when I have to pick up the phone call, when I have to pick up the phone to make a call to somebody, then I forget it. Then I don't believe it. Yes. Then I'll no longer and that's, believe in myself to do this. Yep. And that's where you have to go back to your ability as a human being. You have the ability as a human being that nothing else, no other creature on this planet has, and that's the ability to change your thought pattern, to alter your thoughts. And so you make a conscious decision. It says, okay, I believed it once. I knew that I could do it. I choose in this moment, I choose to believe and to think that I can. And therefore, I'm going to act according to that thought. Not to doubt, because you can have, everybody has doubts. But it's a conscious choice, and you recognize that's the God-given right that we have as human beings placed here on this earth to choose and to, to think. And so if we can change our thought long enough to make that phone call or change our thoughts long enough to, to talk to that person and then practice sustaining thought, practice it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's as learned a skill as any other skill that you're going to learn in doTERRA is the ability to sustain a positive thought. Yeah, it's, and I it's believe as learned more as learning. So than it's, it's as learned as learning that you can't do it Mm-hmm. Or thinking that you can't. I mean, all, all that it is is thought, thought patterns that you have, that you have uh, fostered for long enough that you actually start yep. to believe it. And, and Henry Ford said, Henry it. Ford said, he said that the hardest thing that people will do in this in this world as it, as it pertains to success, the hardest thing you will ever do is think. 
is thinking is the hardest the hardest thing you will do, and and it returns to that to that the ability to retain and to maintain that positive thought process is very difficult because you're constantly being bombarded by all these other you know doubts and fears and and everything else that comes along with it. And so even a guy like Henry Ford, who who is one of our American legends of success, right? He ta- he teaches the same principle. Is that you've got to be able to sustain a, uh, sustain that thought, and if you can sustain the okay. thought that you will be successful, that uh, long enough to create action around it, and 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 maintain it, then your results will will follow. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I'm going to take the call. I'm going to take where what David has taught us, and I'm going to take the call in a little bit different direction after we get a couple other hands taken care of. Um. And so I want people thinking about this. What I'm going to ask is, because I was doing, again, I was doing this mentoring call with this person. And I was explaining to her this concept of certainty, clarity, and confidence, and posture, and who holds the cookie. And I was teaching her all these things that we've been talking about, right? This posture of when you invite, you've got to invite with power where, where you're going. And what she said to me, she goes, it's difficult for me to believe that I'm going to be diamond because I haven't seen it yet. And and I said and, – and what I told her was I'm like, right, but this is where faith comes into it. You have to increase your faith. Faith is is when you uh, – it's, it's, it's described in the scriptures as um, evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Or it's been described as a belief in something – that you can't see, but it's true. And and for me, uh, me going diamond, it was something I wasn't yet. I hadn't even signed anybody else up yet, but I believed I would, and I and I had faith, even though I hadn't had that success yet. And so I was just thinking about how do you help someone? And then this this lady that I was mentoring, she goes. It's very difficult for me to believe in myself. It's difficult for me to believe, to have certainty that I'm going to get what I'm trying to get. And this is, and that got me thinking, well, how do you do that? So, the, so here's the question for the whole mastermind, just for everybody. If you have figured out, if you've ever had thoughts where you can't do something, where you weren't able to do it, you didn't believe that you could do it, and you didn't have certain clarity and confidence in yourself. How did you change your thoughts like David just started talking about in a sustained enough way that you started believing different? How did you change your thought pattern? So that's the question for the rest of them, but I'm still asking the, the, these hands that are raised. I'm going to ask Christy and then Angie, um, how do you commit builders? Christy Fiker, go ahead. Okay, hi. Hi. So I can answer the um, the question that you that you just asked on on how do you change those thoughts when you're <clears throat> doubting yourself and you're having negative thinking that's not productive. Did you have that? So, <clears throat> yeah, I've had that. <laughs> and um, so um, what I have done is um, I, I found affirmation to not actually be that easy for me to believe. So um, so what I've done that, that has um, been much easier to integrate and that I've really felt a shift from is just writing down the negative things that I'm thinking and then next to it writing what God would tell me about me. And and it's, it's just the truth. And the other stuff just becomes so small and insignificant. And um, so that's been really life-changing. Okay, wait. Anyone so can do that. Repeat what you just said. So you're saying you would, the lies that are playing in your head of of mm-hmm. I can't do it, I'm not enough, whatever it is. You write down the lie, and then you write down the opposite to that. Yeah. Which which you're describing as the truth, and and so basically it's a recognition of when the lie is being said, and then you're writing down the truth so that you can start to change the thoughts that are coming into your mind. Yes. Perfect. And it's so awesome, and anyone can do that. So did you 
Did you have to overcome those thoughts in your doTERRA journey and your diamond today? Is that, are those things, yeah. is that something you actually had to overcome? Yeah, and I, I still have days where um, where stuff is coming up for me and I have to, like, for sure, and I have to get it out and move on and recognize the truth. And um, Absolutely. So it's still a process. Awesome. I'm so glad you said that because ever since the Thousand Diamond Project has come to me, I have never been faced with so much reoccurring lies in my head. Like, yeah. Who are you? Who are you to think this? I mean, all, <laughs> and, yeah. You know, and it's a constant battle. So I'm gonna thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to share as far as how how to commit builders? Because you had yes. r- risen yes. your hand. You raised your hand about that. Absolutely. Yeah. So Rad Richardson enrolled us, and I said no, thank you to the business for two years, and the. The beautiful piece about how we are where we are now is because when Rod invited us to the business, he was clear and he was confident and he wasn't attached. So there wasn't this feeling that he needed us because that would have really um, most likely repelled me, I imagine, because that's usually what happens if you have a, a, a need and you're attached. And so I think that um, not being attached oh piece. I mean, it, you know, it also goes along with this that is, confidence. <laughs> you are so right. It's it's the, it's the strong invitation, but that 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 you knew his success was not determined by you saying yes or no. Yep. It's awesome. And but and he was going to succeed. So so he was going to succeed whether or not you said yes or no. And so. Did you feel when you when you were turning him down initially? Did you feel like you were the one missing out? Um, I no, I felt like my life was good, and that's why I was turning this down. Uh, but then when I finally said yes, it was because my life could be great, and that's what really <laughs> shifted. But that that because that invitation was there and was clear from the beginning, I knew who to call. Right. So then, so then, so he committed you eventually. So he came with a strong invitation initially. He was not attached, meaning, meaning that he was going to get there with or without you. So yep. when did the, when did the, did he invite you again? Was there a constant invitation or a reoccurring invitation or how did you eventually come around? So there was a recurring invitation. Um, and it was probably, um, I'm imagining it was whenever he came to town to visit family in Wisconsin and grow his business here. Um, so it wasn't uh, super often or, like, overly inviting, but it was definitely consistent. And um, and it was through um, a, a shift in um, – an idea about network marketing and and what what do I care what other people um, think of me if they're not paying my bills and and my life could be way more free if I'm not on call all the time as a midwife and all the heavy responsibilities uh. that go with it and and so then I knew exactly who I needed to turn to. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what you're saying is this. He helped. He helped you overcome some of your concerns. Yes. There's another key, everyone. Your ability to discover other people's concerns, what is holding them back from committing to do the business, and helping them overcome those concerns. Because Christy was just saying all these things that we help people over. Why, you know, not caring what people think. That's a big deal. That's something everyone has to get over. Uh, thank you. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, okay, Angie Archibald. You. Angie Archibald, what is what are your thoughts on this? Oh, hi. So I raised my hand quite a while ago, so I'll just really quickly add the thoughts I was having when you were talking about how you yeah how you invite powerfully. Um, my thought is always it's just not that inspiring to ask somebody if they want to be a silver. Like, hey, I'm going to be a diamond. You want to be a silver? Like it's 
2100 a month average, but when you start out as a silver, it's half of that, you know? So I always ask people, I'm going to be a diamond. I'm looking for four people who also want to be diamonds. And I'm mm. not kidding, you know? Like, I really don't want to be a, a, a diamond with four silvers. You know what I mean? I feel like that's pretty Yeah, that, that's because not silver, nearly as fun as a diamond with four diamonds. <laughs> with four diamonds. Yeah, because a, a diamond with four silvers is pretty shaky, in my opinion. Right. So um, I would like to be a diamond with four diamonds who each have four diamonds, and that's what I tell people. If you want to be one of my diamonds, and then I also tell them, um, sorry, I'm getting another call while this while I'm talking, so I'm sure my voice is beeping out. But um, I also tell them there's lots of ways to get there. There's as many ways to become diamond as there are people on the planet, and so I'm not going to tell you exactly how we're going to do it either. In fact, I've built my business relatively slowly as a stay-at-home mom with uh, oftentimes in the past at least an unsupportive husband. So I challenge you to do it faster than I've done it. Show me how you're going to do it. What are your talents and challenges? Let me connect you with other leaders that have gone in paths that you imagine yourself doing it, and let's get this done however you want to do it. And I kind of take it, like I will connect you with whatever you need, and I know that we can do this. And I'll show them lots of examples of people who have done it, and then I say, are you in or not? So it really it's different than when I used to invite because I felt like it was entirely on my shoulders to get them there. But now I'm just like, I'm going here, and I want people who want to go big with me. Is that you or not? And their response mm. is very telling, you know? Right. That's a good point because sometimes the response is, um, the response is important because because if you're serious about what you're saying and you're confident in where you're going, then you're not going to just take anybody who gives you a kind of a, yeah, I think I might want to. And then it's like, no, I mean, if you're sincere and wanting to find four people that want to go diamond, then you're looking for people that are going to be, you know, ambitious and, and want those things that, that, you're, that uh, you're telling them they can have. Yeah. All right, Brian Hess. What are your thoughts, Brian? Hey, Seth. Um Thanks for uh, letting me speak here for a second. I just I just wanted to talk to the individuals in the phone call um, that maybe still are having a hard time picturing themselves making that big of a that big of an invitation to somebody. Maybe their belief isn't quite there yet. And I think it's it's okay it's okay if your belief moves along with the belief pyramid step by step by step. Yes. And and so when I first got started, I there's no way I could have invited somebody to be a diamond with me. There's, just, there's no way, you know. But right. but now I'm like, why would you want to be anything else, you know? And and like like my my belief like I'm going to be a presence of diamond because duh, you know that's 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 where my belief is at now. But in the beginning, it had to be like these oils are awesome. They changed my life, and I'm going to work to help other people change their lives with these oils. And I'm going to have fun doing it. And 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 just just that level of belief was, was okay because people wanted to be a part of that as well. And then as as we grew, I'm like, okay, you know what? These oils did work for me. They worked for somebody else, and I got paid. And so now I can start inviting people to come and make money with us. Like, the oils are awesome. They're going to change lives. We're going to have fun. And you know what? We're going to make some money, too. And then and you, can, you can work up to that. It's okay. You know, you don't have to start off with, with building and inviting people to be a part of a presidential team. You can, you can just invite people with where you're at. You, don't, you want to make sure that your invitation does not exceed your belief. Because, yep. because, then, it, it, won't because then it comes across weird. Yeah. That's a great That's point. Yes. Sorry, can you finish your thought? Oh, I, I, I did. Go ahead. That's, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, um, I just want to address um, that belief thing to you know at the end what you were that question. You know when I sit here and I look back at my personal journey and I get that everyone's is different. Um, you know I didn't believe any of that stuff in the beginning that I could even be silver. Um, I didn't believe that. You know, I hoped that doTERRA could do something for me, but I didn't believe in, in doTERRA. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe 
um, that people <laughs> want to enroll. I didn't believe that I could ever teach somebody. I mean, talk about a huge list of, like, disbeliefs that I had in myself, right? And I hope I can get through this, but um, the reason why I didn't believe those things is because of the person who I was. You know, um, it'd be pretty shocking for people to see before and after pictures of me. <laughs> but I wasn't someone that took great care of myself. My, you know, situation, I, I didn't take very good care of my hair. I didn't take very good care of my body. Um, I didn't do my makeup very well. Um, I didn't dress very well. And so for me, to, I remember, like, starting to do affirmations. I, it, as soon as I would say something, it would come right back to me like, yeah, right, you fat cow or something like that. I mean, it just, I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> even say affirmations without immediately coming right back at me. You know what I mean? And I love affirmations and vision boards and I do that now and I did that on my way to silver. But the things that I started out doing in the beginning was changing the things I hated about myself. I hated looking frumpy and fat and I blamed that I didn't have finances to have a gym membership and work out. I blamed that I didn't have finances to go buy a nice outfit. And finally one day I was like, screw it. I'm going to go buy two nice outfits so I can at least look and feel better when I'm around somebody. You know what I mean? When I'm trying to get them to follow me. And so I started out with little things like that and just changing the things I hated about myself. I started taking better care of myself. I started working out. I started losing weight. I started doing my makeup different, my hair different. And, I mean, um, I started – just totally engrossing myself in personal development so that when I did say those affirmations, I could believe it because I was already starting to become someone by making those simple changes of a wardrobe or something like that. You know what I mean? But anyways, it's just, it's just really interesting when I look back at it because it had everything to do with those beliefs, had everything to do with not liking something about myself. And if you can pinpoint what it is you don't like about yourself, you just start working on changing that. You know, and you can start, then you can start shifting and using affirmations and vision boards, um, you know, to soak in more of that positivity, positivity. And then every success you have, you build upon it. And so then what I started doing was I started keeping a little success board that anytime something happened, I would go put it up there, right? Like I would get an acknowledgement from just hair on going executive. <laughs> I would pin it up there, right? I'd get a card from Rod and I'd put it up there. I would get an email or a thank you card for somebody. I'd put it up there. And I started being able to have that around me that I could go, yeah, I'm successful. I'm a successful person. And even if it meant in that small thing, I just had to start seeing success. Right. And that even comes from someone telling me, hey, you look really nice today. That was a success because I did it before, <laughs> you know? Right. I mean, it's, anyways, I hate talking about it. It was just like such a pathetic time in my life. But um, those, those, when you don't believe it, there's something about yourself that you don't agree with, and you need to fix that. Right. Yeah, I was I, – thank you for sharing these things. I know that, like, whatever, you know, what everybody is sharing, like even, you know, Brian, uh, when he was – I mean, here's a blue diamond saying, I didn't believe. And then <laughs> and then Courtney, I didn't believe any of it, you know. <laughs> and and – um, and, but I'll tell you something that – but – but in both cases, and same thing with what Christy was saying, when you don't believe, I think that there is something that actually that there is a common uh, unsaid truth in the whole process. While you weren't believing, someone was believing for you. Someone believed you could do it when you believed you couldn't. Someone believed in the product and the opportunity and the company when you didn't and believed that you would get there eventually. And and so this power of faith is that you have to extend and, and believe and change. And I mean, like like David was mentioning, the, the ability to change our thoughts. Well, when you start thinking differently than everyone else and can hold that thought and proclaim that thought long enough until other people start believing the same the way you do. That's the way the belief is transferred from one person to another. And so it's really fascinating for me to hear these stories and to recognize that, that we all kind of go through these things. I mean, if I were to be, if I were to, you know, totally be honest with you right now, you know, ever since declaring a thousand diamond vision, I'm like, man, I cannot believe the amount of <laughs> doubt that has just been crushing me at times. 
and I have to go back and just be like, no, this is uh, I can I can hold on to that experience and go, no, I know that this is right. This is where we're going, and um, and then they hang around people that believe in that type of thing with me, and start hey, to try to hold that thought. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just have to bring this up because you 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 mentioned a couple of times now that since you declared that what you felt. And what it is, is it's a reminder of what you felt in the beginning. It's just on a bigger scale. And so in order for you to empower those people that are going to get you to a thousand, you've got to go back and know what they're feeling so that you know how to approach where they're at. Because you're, you're describing in, in, in what you're feeling, like your doubts in this thousand diamond thing, it's just magnified of what someone's feeling in the very beginning when they're like, can I hit silver? <laughs> I know. It's the exact same thing, but you had to be reminded again because it's gotten easy for you because it's easy to be a blue diamond. It's yeah. easy. But it's the same feeling. It's the exact same feeling that you're feeling now is the same feeling that you felt or that those others are feeling when they're trying to decide if they're going to hit elite or premier right. or silver. And so the process is the same, and it goes back to what I mentioned before is it's what thoughts are you going to allow to dictate the belief that projects you in one, one direction or another? Because your belief is going right, to project exactly. you. It's either going to project you towards success or it's going to project you towards failure and I quit. And the belief right. is fueled by the thought that you, that you have. And that thought of I can do it, I, have a th- I can create a thousand diamonds, that was a true thought. It can be done. It absolutely can be done. It will be done by somebody. And the thought that yeah. you now you have to perpetuate is that that I can do it, which creates enough belief in you to go do it. Just the exact same pattern that you're talking about that everybody else has to go through to hit silver. <laughs> you are great. Thank you, David. You're right, Melissa. I'm dying to hear what you have to say. You, by the way, Melissa, you crushed last week. You, <laughs> you ended last week's call so amazingly. So anyway. I'm, I'm so anxious to hear what you have to say. Well, thank you so much, Seth. Gosh, there are so many things that have been coming to my mind. Um, one of the things that came to my mind in terms of our ability to commit someone is becoming a person of influence. And that has to do with what you've talked about in terms of clarity and confidence and that posture that we carry. And and when we are that person of influence, then we have the ability to influence somebody to, you know, to believe in themselves, to take action towards the business, to have that confidence in us, in our ability to lead them, even if maybe they don't have the belief or the confidence in themselves at that moment, right? They can hang on to our, into, they can hang on kind of the coattails of our confidence and our belief and, and whatnot. Um, And so you might be saying, well, how do I become a person of influence? Well, it comes back down to personal development. It comes back down to, like, exactly what Courtney was just saying, right? When she was feeling like she was frumpy and and overweight and not taking good care of herself, she was not feeling like she was a person of influence, and she may not have been a person that had much influence with the people around her. But, heck, now she does, right? She's a powerful, influential woman. And she has people that actually seek after her because she is so influential. And, and so it is a process. And no matter where we're starting, whether we have to become that person of influence right now in our journey in doTERRA or whether we paid our dues beforehand and became a person of influence, it is something that can be learned. I think that to when Rod came to me and asked me to be one of his leaders in doTERRA. Now, I had, I had already had many, many years of experience and success in network marketing ventures. Rod had no experience in network marketing in terms of building his own business. He would never built a network marketing business before. So I had more experience and in some cases more success than he did in that realm. So I easily could have said, well, Rod, you have not, you hadn't had any success in network marketing before. Why would I follow you? But the reason I did was because he had a track record of success in life and in his other business ventures. 
So that's another resource that we can draw from in our lives to help commit builders. We might be fairly new in doTERRA, and we're looking to, to start, you know, committing those builders. But if we're a person that has a track record of success in other areas of our life, then people are going to have that confidence in us. And so, again, it comes back to personal development and applying those principles of success in our life so we become a successful person, successful uh, in our family life, successful in um, other interests, successful in whatever it is we're doing. Those are things I think uh, maybe tools in our toolbox that help us be able to commit Builders, And we will start to see that people will seek us out going, hey, I want what you have. I want to do this business too. And so those were just a couple of, of thoughts that were on my mind about this topic. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, when you were, when you were mentioning the, the, the fact that there was success in the past, and that that gave you confidence in the success that could be ha- happen in the future. I was I was reminded of the people who haven't had any success in the past, and how they must be feeling when they go. But what about me? Because no one's going to follow me because I I've failed at everything in the past. Maybe I've had I've had a failed marriage. I've had a failed you know career. I didn't finish this. I didn't do that. Or whatever it happens to be, and, and, and then they start thinking, because I haven't had those successes in the past, how can I be like Rod, who had successes in the past? And the funny thing is is that I, is that I look back and go, yeah, but when Rod started doTERRA, <laughs> he, he was not living in success, and neither was I, <laughs> despite that. But, but, it's kind of, but it's kind of like what Courtney was saying, too, though. You know, it's like, yes, but success starts now. It can start exactly. right now, and it can start with the small successes, even, you know, you, you know, like what Courtney was saying, even changing the way that she was doing her makeup was a, was a sign of success and change in her life that, that, that showed to other people. We've got a lot of hands up. Uh, Jessica, what are your thoughts? Well, everybody has spoke a lot on a lot of the thoughts that I've had, which is amazing. Um, and so I think for me, what I, the, the initial thing that committed me to building was uh, Desiree and Mary both just believing in me. Like I first, I first uh, mm. got introduced to the oils, and I was like, I was plugging into a lot of things. I was a great networker, except for I had no idea what networking was. <laughs> um, and Mary, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many people I know that I can send to you. I can get you so much business. And she just kind of looked at me, and she's like, oh no. That's your business. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm not doing this as a business. And, and I think that, that really, I think, it's, I think committing somebody, I think it's a very gradual thing, and I think that everything that everybody's touching on is part of all the ingredients that make this big commitment soup, and it's just this, like, it's the gathering all of it. And I noticed, for me, um, when I spoke with Desiree the first time, like how Alonso was saying of leverage, leverage, leveraging the upline, you know, Desiree was like, oh, well, what do you do for money right now? And I was telling her, and she's like, okay, we'll be able to get rid of this job in no time. And I thought she was crazy, you know, but the fact that she planted that seed of belief in me. And then from there, the the personal development. And one thing that I've noticed a lot lately that um, I have another side business of my art that was my main dream to do for a long time. And a lot of people are um, responding to that business a lot better, and people are like, oh, wow, what are, what are you doing, you know? And, and I talk about doTERRA and all the business training that I've been getting because if I would have started my other company before I did doTERRA, it would have been flat on its face a long time ago. And I let, I let people know about all of the, of the culture of the team and the trainings that we have and the personal development and the support with, the, like, everybody's kind of there step by step with us. And um, I noticed a whole new level of me being able to commit people. Um, I've been sober for a while, but I just started. Um, uh, Desiree and Alonso came into town while Des- uh, while Mary was out doing Diamond Club, and so I asked Mary. I said, "Hey, can I plan? Can I plan all the events?" And she almost graciously let me <laughs> take that on. But she um, 
she she did. She let me do it. And when a lot of people on my team and even people in the community that showed up to this event that I organized, it was, it was such an eye-opener. I love how Katie Glasgow just nailed it down all the time, how people make decisions at events. And I noticed that when people see my consistency with what I'm doing, um, with all of that, they're just like, oh, I didn't realize it was like that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's like that. And so I noticed that this last wave of that, people are really catching on. I think a lot of the my team members that have been kind of half in, half out after this last event that I hosted, you know, typically we have about 30 people that come to these events, and they're usually people that are already in doTERRA, and we just did things a little bit differently this time. And this time there was 130 people, and I think about 75 of them are not in doTERRA. And so when people saw what I was doing and how I've gotten to this point, through all that development to be so confident and so organized. Um, and that's being organized is a very different thing for me <laughs> and to take on just the idea of commitment. But even so, me embracing the idea of committing to it instead of just, yeah, I'm doing it. It's, it's what it, it is, what it is. And now I'm like, oh, I'm doing this and this is what it is. <laughs> and I like how they touched on too about just like the patience. You know, to me, it doesn't matter if it's this person or that person, I know that it's all happening. And so the patience level and the non-attachment um, and meeting people where they are, I just think it's so beautiful because I have a lot of people committing now that um, were not very committed before because I feel deeply committed on on brand new levels. And so I think that's reflecting yes. it. And then, and then just to speak to the intangible side, I love um, one of my downline, uh, Jane Love, she taught me about question asking. And, um, you know, if you have a worry, just to flip it into a question. So, you know, what does it feel like to be diamond instead of, like, oh, my God, how am I ever going to be doing that? Or, you know, even on a daily basis, I just say, who can I help today? Who can I serve today? Who can I find today that wants to do this with me? And those daily small intentions come back bigger than I could ever even possibly plan out. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jessica. Thanks for sharing that. And I just want, I know you're only silver today, but just the way you talk, your presence and all that, you're going to be diamond. If if you, <laughs> you didn't know that before, just so you know, that's going to be a reality in your life. Um, well, I really appreciate okay. you saying that. And the, also the last thing from last week too, um, I just think that the recognition in doTERRA is one of the most outstanding things on top of the other brilliant things that doTERRA is all about, but I think that the recognition, because as an adult, we don't really get a lot of recognition for things. Like, usually it's, oh, if you're married or have a kid, you get recognition that way, but I think it's really incredible as part of the magic of what doTERRA is, is just that basic recognition within our team and from the company as well. So I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Jessica. I Look, we got to end the call. We're, we're about four minutes over, but before I go, uh, I want to apologize to everyone who has their hand raised that I can't get to. Um, but thank you for everyone who has participated and contributed. I want to end on one thing. Um, I didn't expect to end the call on this, but I feel like it's necessary, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go here. I think that the, the a common theme that has been unspoken at times it's been spoken, but it's it's always been there, and that is that. At some point in the process, the leader was believing in the person that they were inviting. Mm -hmm. They believed that the person that they were inviting could do this. And and um, and my sister Jacqueline, she's on the call, and so I'm going to – Jacqueline, you might have your line muted or something, but I, I just want to take a second, literally not too long. But I was talking to Jacqueline at convention in September, and when we were – she was describing an experience that she had where she wanted to know. She wanted to know if everyone could, in fact, be a diamond, if everyone could. And and uh, I don't – Jacqueline, I really don't want you to share this in detail because I know it was a sacred experience, but I just would like for you to just share what you know. Can everyone do this? Hi, Seth. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, everyone can. Will they? That's the question. But I did have an experience at last convention where 
I was wondering if I was a big fat liar. <laughs> and I went around convention and I would look at people and I'd say, I keep telling people that anyone can do this, but I'm seeing a lot of people who keep not doing this. And I would look at some of the big leaders and I looked at some of the other leaders and I'd look at people that were there that, you know, were just starting or, and I would think, can they do this? And that was like in my heart for several months before convention and I really started asking the question because I didn't want to be lying to people. And, uh, and so, um, I, you know, when you, when you really are thinking and pondering on things and you give yourself quiet time, then um, you you receive answers. And it might not be all, you know, all of a sudden, but I was in a, a sacred place for me and and looked over at someone and, and then just had this overwhelming experience like, yep, everyone can do it and we're, they're all super loved and super full of potential and and it was the most liberating thing to have that truth just poured into my soul and that's the only way I can explain it because because now I I can say that and I know that it's true now like I said will everyone know but could they can they absolutely and that's something I learned in a sacred place when I was at convention and and I got that answer. So, yes, everyone can. Thank you. So I wanted, I just wanted people to hear that from you. It was a pretty powerful experience for you and, and for me when you told me about it. And just the thought that our job is to believe in people. And our job is to help them believe in themselves. Because everyone can do it. Because everyone can change. So, love you. We'll talk to you next week.